In this graphics guide, I'm going to show you the best graphics settings in Delta Force for the highest performance and best visibility. For this purpose, I collected performance benchmarks of each graphics setting in Delta Force on these two systems. Also, I will show you side by side comparisons of each graphics setting to help you get the best visibility at the least performance impact. Finally, I want to mention that if you're only interested in a specific topic of this video, then please use the chapters in the timeline. Starting off with a couple of Windows settings, here you can see the performance impact of hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and game mode. On both of my systems, I'm seeing a slight improvement in performance with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned on. On the other hand, game mode only seems to boost performance on my Intel and Nvidia based system. However, because it doesn't appear to significantly reduce performance on the old AMD system either, my recommendation would be to turn both of these settings on for the highest performance in Delta Force. You can achieve this by clicking on the start icon, typing in graphics settings, clicking on change default graphics settings. Here you'll find the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling option which after you turn it on, you'll have to reboot your system in order for these changes to apply. And if you're now looking for game mode, you'll find the game mode settings where you'll find the option to turn the game mode on. Finally, if you're wondering whether or not you should be running rebar with Delta Force, my clear recommendation is always would be that if you're on AMD, try to turn rebar on and see if this improves your performance. However, if you have an Nvidia GPU, then always turn rebar off and do not force it using the Nvidia inspector, because as I showed in my previous video linked in the card right now, this always leads to worse performance. Okay, so let's jump into the game and here the first thing you want to check is that the display adapter is set to your actual GPU rather than the iGPU on your CPU because that would be a big yikes. So just double check to make sure that you're using your proper GPU for the game. Display mode, you can use either full screen or borderless windowed. I didn't find any performance differences between these two, but of course, if you want to be able to alt tap faster, then borderless windowed is the way to go. And if you want to have potentially the best input latency, then full screen is the way to go. And the rest leave on automatic. Instead of a hard frame rate limiter, you should use Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, which I'm going to talk about later in today's video. Now, the out of match frame rate cap by default is set to 60. However, this leads to the awkward situation where if you go to operations and you open up the black side, that the entire black side is also capped to 60 FPS. And this makes for a very unpleasant um, interaction, both of the black side. Um, but more importantly, even in the firing range, this fixes the frame rate to 60 FPS, which of course doesn't make for particularly good testing of weapons at 60 FPS. So if you want to fix that, you'll want to have the out of match frame rate cap set to unlimited. And there you go, you now have smooth performance also in the firing range. Now I guess smooth is relative because you always have these kind of frame time spikes, which unfortunately are still not fixed as of this moment. Sharpness of course very much comes down to personal preference. And just for your convenience, I'm going to show you how the game looks like at a sharpness value of 0%, 25%, 50%, and last but not least 100%. Me personally, I like to leave this at 50%. Finally, make sure that VSync is disabled because this introduces input latency. And frankly, I haven't tested how Nvidia fast syncs improve upon the input latency issue with VSync enabled, but because I personally never encounter screen tearing, I usually just leave those disabled. Coming to the field of view, I'm showing you here the performance that I'm getting across three different graphical presets. So the blue lines are for the low preset, the yellow lines for the high preset, and the red line for the ultimate preset. The solid line is for my old AMD based system and the dashed line for my Intel and Nvidia based system. So a higher line is better and as expected the low preset gives me higher performance compared to the high and ultimate preset. Now I really want to give props to the developers because when I produced this exact same graph during the Steam Fest, I found that on Intel and Nvidia performance would be abysmal and pretty much match the ultimate preset on my old AMD based system, even though those two systems should generally perform roughly identical. As you can see, this is now the case and performance is pretty much identical across the different graphical presets on my two systems. Interestingly, we can observe a nice linear increase in performance when increasing field of view on my old AMD based system. 
This doesn't appear to happen on NVIDIA, and I'm not really sure why that is the case. However, the conclusion from this graph is pretty much that if you want to get the best performance, then running a low field of view is actually detrimental. I personally now always run the game at a field of view of 120. The vehicle's third person field of view I personally also like to have at the highest value, however this very much comes down to personal preference. The scope magnification gives you this very nice effect of that actually only the scope zooms in and the rest of your screen is actually on a realistic zoom level. I personally actually really think this is a bit jarring compared to when having this disabled, where your entire screen zooms in to the magnification level of your scope. Of course this is super unrealistic, in reality you would not have your outside vision also zoom in to the amount of magnification of your scope. However, when turning this on, you actually also get this message here that this significantly reduces performance, so you probably only want to use this in the single player campaign for immersive reasons. Also, doing this actually gives you a disadvantage, because with this kind of zoomed in field of view, you can now see things next to your scope, which is not possible when you have this setting turned on. Just notice how this kind of dummy here to the left kind of disappears when I hover over it to the left. So enabling this actually gives you a competitive disadvantage. Now producing these kinds of very in-depth and very data-driven videos really takes a whole bunch of time. And compared to other YouTubers out there that just very quickly go through these settings and give their random recommendations without any apparent reason, I actually try to give you proper advice in terms of actually getting better visibility and better performance. So if you enjoy this data-driven approach, then leave a like and a comment down below for the algorithm. And if you want to see more of these kinds of videos for your favorite games, then let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel. Moving on to the basic graphic settings and I want to give additional kudos to the developers for implementing an additional toggle here to turn Temporal AA on or off. Previously this was only possible for a config tweak and another thing that they implemented was this button down here where you can recompile shaders, which before we would also have to enforce using a tweak in the config. So it appears that the developers are actually looking at these kinds of videos and trying to improve the game with these small quality of life fixes. On screen you can see the performance and visual impact of Temporal AA and personally I don't like the way this makes the whole screen very blurry whenever you start moving and because this also reduces performance I would highly recommend to leave this disabled. The weapon motion blur I personally also don't like which is why I leave it disabled as well. Moving on to reflections where we have the first option in game which apparently has no effect on either performance or the visual fidelity of the game. So whatever reflection I looked at, I really wasn't able to find any difference between the low and ultimate settings. This is actually quite strange because during the Steamfest version of Delta Force, I was able to find visual differences between reflections ultimate and reflections low. So I hope that this is just a bug and until it's fixed you probably just want to leave this on low. Texture anisotropic filtering from my performance benchmark and visual comparison only has three presets and that is the low preset which is identical to medium and high. Then we have ultra and the extreme preset. And then again, ultimate is the same as extreme. Again, I'm not sure why the developer decided to have six different graphical presets for each of the graphical settings, if usually only about three of them are actually implemented. Also, I should mention that I found it very strange that ultimate is above extreme. I would say extreme is like the highest preset that you could have and you should probably rather have a very low setting instead of low. Regardless, anisotropic filtering improves the visuals of objects that are viewed at a very shallow angle. Now frankly, the differences are very small and I actually had to look quite hard to find example shots for this comparison here. And given the very high FPS penalty that anisotropic introduces, I would actually recommend to leave texture filtering on the low preset. Ambient occlusion introduces additional shadows around and underneath objects and from this comparison we can see that there is likely only two or three ambient occlusion levels with the off, medium and ultra option. Performance wise I'm seeing a reduction of roughly 3 to 4% on medium and 8 to 9% on ultra. I personally am no big fan of ambient occlusion which is why I would recommend to leave it turned off. Particles, unfortunately I don't really have too many examples here, also because this um, option requires the game to be restarted and I only noticed this very late into producing this video. Um, however, I do have one comparison of my Intel and Nvidia based system where I set this uh, setting to ultimate, which you can see on screen right now.
And essentially, I'm usually not a big fan of particle quality because this usually just makes explosions more demanding on your system. And additionally, I noticed that on the ultimate preset, lighting sources have these kind of flare effect, which I personally also don't like very much. So for all of these reasons, I would recommend to leave the particle setting on low. From my testing, the distortion option has no effect on performance or the visual fidelity of Delta Force. Scene details didn't seem to affect performance whatsoever and to find a difference was really hard and mostly I was able to find some differences at very far away objects where for instance this rock face here would show wrongly instead of the grass. On the other hand scene view distance seemed to have a quite substantial impact on performance in Delta Force. For this setting once again I was only able to find free preset that actually modifies the game and that is the low preset the extreme and ultimate preset. Now I don't really think that this option is correctly named because it doesn't really affect the distance at which objects have a certain quality. It basically affects just the type of quality of certain objects in the world. Visually, we can see that the differences are not significant in my opinion. It basically just has minor differences in terms of the visual quality of certain objects, such as um, the lights here on this light post, as well as strangely enough, it actually modifies the color of the line. So on low, I have this kind of red white lines, whereas this then gets turned into white lines on extreme, which is very strange. And then also the sandbags seem to have a different texture when moving from low to extreme. Now, frankly, I'm not sure why anybody would want to increase the scene view distance option to a higher preset because this only reduces performance at basically no improvement in visual clarity of the game. Depth of field has no impact on performance and whether or not you like your gun to be blurred when ADSing pretty much comes down to personal preference. The global illumination quality is another odd setting as when I increase this setting, I do actually see the performance to degrade. So probably low medium is the same and then high is another preset and then ultra to ultimate are the same setting. However, visually I wasn't able to find any differences of how this actually affects the illumination of the game. So because ultimate and low look exactly identical, I would recommend to leave this on low. Shaders is another very interesting option because you can actually modify this option in game and see changes live so you don't actually have to restart the game. I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it, but I did this and I saw that there are probably again three options in terms of shader quality. So we have the low and medium preset which are the same, then we have the high preset as well as the ultra preset which is the same as extreme and ultimate. Now when I look at the impact of this setting in game, then I'm not so sure that the name shaders is the proper name for this setting. From this comparison, you can see that increasing shaders actually makes tree move more in the wind. So it actually looks like this setting kind of helps with the interaction between um, the objects and the world. And besides the trees that are starting to look like they're a bit bewitched <laughs> when you go to the higher shader settings, I also noticed that water bodies are no longer just flat surfaces, but instead they actually have some surface to them, which is probably due to the interaction with the wind. Now I personally don't think that the performance penalty is worth the more realistic looking game or kind of the more lively looking game, but obviously if you want to enable this or not, comes down to personal preference. Next we should talk about the texture settings and I'm pretty sure that this is currently bugged in Delta Force because textures low and ultimate look exactly pixel by pixel identical just as they had during the Steamfest version. Now this I found super odd because I really think that you should be able to modify your texture quality in game because this heavily influences your VRAM usage. So people with not a lot of VRAM are probably actually struggling um, to play Delta Force because from my opinion all of the textures are generally always set at the highest possible preset. This makes the game look super crisp but then again it might not be playable for some players. The streaming setting only reduces performance by a few FPS and if we look at a visual comparison then we can see that having this set to a low value actually makes the game look super clean and without any clutter. Um, but at the same time you're kind of just losing a lot of details in the world, which is super odd. I'm not sure why this is called streaming once again, a bit of an odd name for a setting, but this is basically what I would have expected to see with scene details, because this scene has more details. So yeah, super strange, this is called streaming and not just scene details and because this only reduces performance slightly, I would recommend to have this set to ultimate. The shadow setting only affect the shadows of your own operator 
And this does not affect performance whatsoever because, well, your operator is just a very small asset in the world. And frankly, I don't like the way that ultimate looks because this makes the shadows a bit more realistically blurred. So I generally like to have this set to the extreme preset. Now, while shadows only affects the operator, the shadow map setting now also affects all of the other shadows in the world. Now, because of that, this has a much higher impact on performance overall. And when looking at a side by side comparison, we basically just see that shadows have more resolution when going to a higher preset. Once again, the presets low to ultra result in the exact same shadows. And then we have slightly sharper shadows on extreme and finally the sharpest shadows on ultimate. Personally, I think the super high performance penalty of this option is not worth the improved visual quality in game. Because of that, I leave this set to the lowest setting. Post processing actually only has two settings. You have low as well as ultra. This reduces performance by roughly 9 FPS and essentially this option introduces chromatic aberration at the edges of your screen. What this means is that you introduce this yellow and blue fringes around objects at the periphery of your vision. I really hate chromatic aberration in any game so this is why I leave this also set to the lowest preset. For a volumetric fog you either have low or the medium preset. Everything above that is basically just medium. This does not reduce performance that much and what it essentially does is it introduces additional fog in the scene. This side by side comparison very nicely shows how further away in this uh, huge um, building here you have a bit more fog because you have a lighting source at the top um, and frankly I don't like this option because it makes visibility much worse. Finally the animation setting has no effect on performance but I wasn't able to test this fully with other players. Moving to super resolution and here there's basically only two things that I can recommend. If you have an Nvidia GPU then you should definitely use DLSS at the quality preset because this actually gives you a nice slight boost in performance and it will introduce a bit of anti-aliasing. Now the annoying fringing that Nvidia DLSS usually introduces is really not that noticeable on the quality preset. However if you choose the performance preset then the fringing becomes very noticeable. Strangely enough the performance preset actually gives you worse performance than quality so something here is really fishy. But why bother if quality gives you better visual quality anyways. On the other hand if you don't have an Nvidia GPU then I guess you're just out of luck because for some reason on my old AMD based system I only get the option to use temporal super resolution which looks absolutely horrible. But just for reference because this is most likely getting fixed pretty soon here is a comparison of using AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. Once again you want to use this at the quality preset and this makes the game look a little bit smoother than without any anti-aliasing at all. Finally temporal super resolution looks super ugly and I usually stay away from any temporal um, anti-aliasing because it just makes the game look very blurry. Similarly Entel XESS has never really convinced me in the past. Um, it makes the game look very um, grainy and low resolution regardless of the super resolution chosen. Finally we have Nvidia Reflex Low Latency which you should absolutely set to low latency if you're in a GPU bound scenario and you should set it to enhanced if you're more CPU bound. So with that let me very quickly give you my recommended settings for Delta Force for the best performance and the best visual quality. Display mode full screen, set all of the frame rate caps to unlimited, sharpness 50%, FOV 120, have all of the basic graphics setting either to low or off. Disable depth of field, set global animation shaders and textures to low, set streaming quality to ultimate, shadows to extreme and shadow map post processing volumetric fog and animation to low. Finally I like to use Nvidia DLSS at the quality preset to reintroduce anti-aliasing. And if you're more GPU bound use the low latency Nvidia Reflex low latency mode and if you're more CPU bound use enhanced. Now when it comes to reducing this very annoying stuttering in Delta Force some of my viewers also recommended me to run the game in DirectX 11. I tried this but on both of my systems I actually got even worse stuttering when running the game in DX11. So from my experience this really does not help to fix the stuttering. But that about wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.